Hello and welcome to another video courtesy of investingsuccess.ca. Today is January 3rd, 2023. We're going into a new year. Uh, I think a lot of people would like to forget about 2022. It was ugly to say the least. What I want to talk about in this short video is the concept of cycles. And I would like to introduce you to uh, what, what I call the McWhorter cycle. And for those of you that have read my uh, financial astrology almanacs, you will know that I am a, a big fan of Louise McWhorter. Who was she? Um, very simply stated, an astrologer. Uh, lived in New York in the 1930s, um, kept a fairly low profile, did in her career publish only one book, and that was the uh, 1937 publication, uh, The McWhorter um, Technique for Forecasting the Market. Some people have even gone so far as to suggest there may not have been a Louise McWhorter. The name might have been a false name used by some other astrologer. Because remember, in the 1930s in New York, if you were caught practicing what they called the occult science, astrology, reading tea leaves, um, you could be put in jail. So it was, uh, if you did practice it, you, you certainly kept a low profile and possibly even made up a false name to cover your tracks. But in any event, um, the, the McWhorter cycle hinges around a concept called the North Node of the Moon. And I'm just going to share my screen here with you very quickly. And I'm going to open this document here. So if you pull up a horoscope showing the position of the planets, and in this one here, um, January 3rd, this is today, and you'll see that I've drawn a red circle and I've got a red arrow that I've extended into the circle. The red arrow is actually pointing at the symbol for the north node of the moon. And you can see here that it's in 10 degrees of Taurus. And uh, there is a counterpart to the north node. It's called the south node. It will always be 180 degrees opposite. Um, but we Astrologers very seldom focus on the south node. They talk about the north node. So what is, what is the north node mathematically? Well, very simply, the earth rotates around the sun. It travels in a path or a plane called the ecliptic plane. And it goes around and around and around 365 days to make one trip around. Meanwhile, the moon is going around the Earth, and it is confined to a path of motion, a plane, if you will. And the plane of motion of the moon is slightly offset from the plane of motion of the Earth. Mathematically, I think you can envision that if you have two planes that are not parallel, they will, they have to mathematically intersect at two points. Those points are the north node and the south node of the moon. Now, as the cosmos is in motion, the earth going around the sun, the moon going around the earth, the position of these nodes will gradually shift. So here today, uh, the north node is at 10 degrees of Taurus. If we were to come back in 18 and a half years from today, we would find the North Node to be getting pretty close to 10 degrees of Taurus. So it's an 18 and a half degree, eight, sorry, 18 and a half year journey around the 12 signs of the Zodiac. So how do we advantage ourselves of that? I'm gonna bring up another screen here. This is uh, my software called Optima. Now what I've done, I'm not going to focus on the, the uh, most recent McWhorter cycle. 
Uh, I'll do that in a subsequent video. I'm going to take you back in time. Let's go all the way back to uh, the late part of 1969. Now, Louise McWhorter says that in the 18 and a half or so years that it takes the node to go around the moon, the economy will endure periods of weakness and strength. And she correlated that very well in her research. And she said along the way, if there are periods of time when some of the larger outer planets make unfavorable hard aspects to the node, those aspects can weigh on the economy. There also will be times when there will be favorable aspects between planets like Jupiter and the node, Pluto and the node. So every one of these 18 and a half year cycles will be different. Now, how does the McWhorter cycle mesh with reality? Um, is, does the economy operate precisely on 18 and, and a half year cycles? No, uh, but the economy does operate pretty darn close. Um, an economic cycle could be 18 years, it could be 19 years, give or take either way. Um, who knows about this? Investment bankers know about it. People who follow uh, the real estate market on a global scale know about it. And as a matter of fact, I've got some contacts here in Canada that although they didn't realize it, during the 2008 financial crisis, that also happened to be the end of a McWhorter cycle. They unknowingly bought real estate in the United States. Um, and they came back and told me that they had just got one hell of a streaming deal in places like Las Vegas and Phoenix. Yeah, of course you did because you bought right as a new McWhorter cycle was unfolding. Um, so they are now interested in selling and I haven't really explained anything to them, but their gut instinct now is telling them it's time to look at selling. Well, sure, because in a couple of years from now, we're gonna be staring down the barrel of the end of a McWhorter cycle and the beginning of a financial crisis. So I find it curious how a person not knowing anything about McWhorter, the nodes, astrology, if you watch their reactions and their emotions, it's very interesting how they behave. And it really is the events of the cosmos that are driving their emotions and their behavior. So let's go back to, uh, to the uh, 1969. Uh, 6th of May, 69. Look at what happens. The markets reach a, a turning point and they start falling precipitously. This is a chart of the Dow Jones Industrial Average, by the way. What was happening? The node was moving into the sign of Pisces. So in the McWhorter um, methodology, that's time to wake up and pay attention. When you see node going into Pisces, you're getting pretty long in the tooth for um, a McWhorter cycle. And what happens to the markets when the economy is long into a cycle, long in the tooth? Yeah, they, they, people start to get out. They, their, their gut instinct tells them it's time to move on, take the money off the table. And that's exactly what happened. Now, um, 1970, uh, the markets make a significant bottom. And right around that time, Node moves into Aquarius. McWhorter says that when the Node moves into Aquarius, that pretty much signals that the economy has hit bottom. And sure enough, the markets are telling you that in uh, early 1970. Markets then rally and uh, they reach another peak in 71. Why? Saturn moved into the sign of Gemini. McWhorter is adamant that Saturn in the sign of Gemini is a time for everybody to clue in pay attention because things could get a little volatile. And as you can see, markets went down, markets went up, um, markets did get very volatile. We reached a peak in 73. 
Uranus was making a hard 90 degree aspect to the North Node. And that's one of the things that McWhorter cautions about. Uranus making these hard aspects to the node. Time to pay attention, time to watch what you're doing. Um, for those that were alert, paying attention, good, because the markets got hammered after, after uh, 1973. So what else was really going on? Uh, certainly human emotion was rattled. Um, geopolitically, you had uh, the beginning of the OPEC energy crisis. You had um, Arab-Israeli conflict. Uh, you had conflict over the Suez Canal. There was a lot of stuff going on um, as these hard aspects were unfolding and influencing uh, human emotion and the economy. Um, middle of 73, Saturn finally moves out of Gemini. Things recover a little bit, but then they start to retrace. Again, you've got OPEC, you've got rising energy prices, and then to make matters worse, Pluto comes along and makes a square hard aspect to the node. Um, not exactly what people wanted to see. Markets collapsed. What else was happening? Watergate, Richard Nixon. Nasty, nasty, nasty experience. A sitting president caught red-handed um, making some illicit tapings of the opposition party. He was forced out of office. Not what the financial markets uh, enjoy seeing. However, once he's gone, a new president is, is brought in, President Gerald Ford. Markets breathe a sigh of relief. Everything seems to have settled down. Markets rally hard into 1976. Then they reach a peak. Why? Well, you've got Uranus squaring the node again. And markets don't like that. McWhorter tells you that. And down we go again, this time into 1978. What's happening in the late 70s? Interest rates are rising. Um, central bankers are trying to stamp out inflation. Now, markets um, in 1980 start to rise. Um, I've got a green arrow here. This is going to be the subject of another video where we talk about cycles. This green arrow denotes the beginning of what we call the GAN master cycle. And that is when uh, Jupiter and Saturn are conjunct zero degrees apart. That cycle takes um, roughly 20 years almost to unfold. And we're gonna go through that in a, in a subsequent video. And as you can see, um, after that GAN cycle manifested, markets went down for a while, but then they literally exploded until they didn't. 1987. It looks like interest rates are, are wanting to rise. We're getting long in the tooth in the McWhorter cycle. The node is about to enter the sign of Pisces. And maybe, maybe you were around then, maybe you weren't. I was, um, I had just finished university and was just at the point where I was starting to put money into the stock market. I was as green as grass. I knew nothing about what the hell I was doing. Uh, I didn't have that much um, tucked away in, in 87. So this 87 crash didn't really bother me. Um, markets subsequently recovered. But to those people, investment bankers and, and people who are otherwise clued in, they knew that the McWhorter cycle was getting long in the tooth and they would have been taking money off the table as the markets rallied. And uh, they would have stayed away until the markets corrected um, as, as part of the McWhorter cycle. Now in, in the in next series of videos, I'm gonna show you the next McWhorter cycle and the one after that. And I can tell you that the current one that we're in still has um, probably about three years to go. Uh, but three years is a pretty short time. 
And at some point, um, you're going to start to, to uh, get a sense that there's something wrong. A potential crisis is brewing. And uh, that, that is going to be um, the North Node uh, certainly moving into um, Aries and, and moving its way through Aries and starting to look at Pisces. And so when we see the next McWhorter cycle getting long in the tooth in the next few years, time to go to the sidelines and just wait for everything to collapse and then pick up the pieces and go back in. So that, in a nutshell, is the McWhorter cycle. And as I said at the outset, it is not always precisely the 18 and a half years that she talks about. Um, it can be 18 years, it can be 19 years, but it, it will be somewhere in, in that realm. And if you can wrap your head around the McWhorter cycle, um, I would encourage you then to do some reading by a gentleman from Australia. His name is Phil Anderson. He doesn't necessarily talk about McWhorter, but he certainly talks about the, um, the 18, 19 year cycle. And he does it all in the context of real estate. And he follows real estate developments around the world as they unfold as part of the cycle. And if you follow his stuff, he will show you um, how real estate values align very tightly to the cycle. So that's it for today. Thank you very much and uh, keep following this website, investingsuccess.ca. I'm going to do something a little bit different this year. I'm going to make it a point to put more videos on the site. Um, I've certainly got my newsletters, which are doing very well. Uh, certainly there's more room for more subscribers. If, if you uh, feel that there is something to the markets that uh, you're uh, not being told, well, there is. There's, there's not only the McWhorter cycle, there's other uh, astronomical type events that go on, all of which influence human emotion, all of which influence our propensity to buy and sell, uh, be afraid, or be courageous. And if you start looking at the markets through that lens, uh, the markets suddenly take on a very different appearance. All right, enough said. Thank you kindly for watching. and. Uh, I look forward to uh, presenting you with a, with a few more videos in the next few days. Talk to you soon. Thanks.